have now one of the foremost nutritionists in the world today, and he's written this book called The Complete Guide to Health and Nutrition. Speaking, of course, of Gary Knoll, who has his own radio show in New York and has been involved in nutrition for practically a quarter century, huh? Yeah, about 22 years. Sure, it's just... nice to have you on the show. And Dr. Martin Feldman, we met nice earlier, who was also involved in nutrition as well. That is correct. All right, now I have what we call a cholesterol problem, everybody. And I'm about to show you the results of my latest cholesterol test, which just came in last week. So let's go to that uh, slide right now. And as you can see, I have a, a total cholesterol count of 285, which I believe is quite high. Triglycerides, 224, high again. There's the HDL at 46, the LDL at 194, and the ratio of 4.2. What should the ratio be, incidentally? The ratio uh, that I'm accustomed to would really not be the ratio you show on the screen, but rather the total to the HDL, where uh, your total to HDL is actually about a 6. As we divide your total cholesterol by your HDL, and you get about a 6. Is that high or low? That's high in that uh, if one looks at a standard table regarding what does that mean in the reality in terms of your lifespan or potential for cardiovascular problems, you're, uh, you have a worse than average uh, story here. In other words, you're at greater risk than an average person of your age with these cholesterol numbers. Do I have seven minutes to finish the show? <laughs> <laughs> what accounts for the sudden rise? Now, Regis's cholesterol was up, and then he got it down to about 235, and this was about six months ago. Yeah, I and took now some it's up again. EPA and uh, really watched my diet before mm -hmm. we took that last count. It came under 240. And then I kind of, I don't know, I ran out of Max EPA and didn't buy any more and frankly was a little well, less stringent on my diet and this is what happened. Here's really the key though. We should not focus on just these numbers because you can become obsessed with the numbers. The numbers reflect an internal biochemical problem. It's not that you're sitting around pouring cholesterol into yourself because it appears to me that you don't do that. So what we have to consider is why is the body out of balance? The liver is actually probably the villain here. Your liver is out of balance and it's making a little extra cholesterol more than it should. Okay. So we shouldn't just be focusing only on cholesterol or number. We've got to look at the whole body and especially why your liver might be a little bit off the beam. What should I do about this then? All right. Regis, Dr. Feldman suggested treating the whole body. And that means treating your digestion. Most people are not aware that their cholesterol could be high because they're not utilizing the nutrients in the foods that they eat. Most Americans either have too much or too little hydrochloric acid in the stomach. So a simple test would be able to determine if you're adequate in hydrochloric acid. Next, you have to make sure that your gallbladder is working properly, that it's able to secrete the bile into the intestine to break down fats. Now, if you went on a completely totally cholesterol-free diet, you could still have a high cholesterol. Mm. So it's not just diet. Example, stress can increase cholesterol. Even going into a doctor's office to get blood taken, the fear of a needle going into you and the fear of blood coming out can raise the cholesterol as much as 50 points. Well, that explains it. He's definitely afraid of needles. And That's probably what it is. It, it, that, that <laughs> well, isn't that true, Regis? <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, they did take a vial of blood and... Uh, and you screamed and, and yelled and then he went through a terrible thing. I shouldn't have. It didn't hurt that much. But, you know, I, I just have but to that, fear. That, that can cause cholesterol. Day-to-day -day stress can cause cholesterol. But what's important here is not the total cholesterol. The indicative factor is the high-density lipoproteins. That's the good part of cholesterol. Mm -hmm. The low-density lipoproteins is the bad part of cholesterol. You want to increase your high density, and you want to decrease your low density. Okay. Now, how do you do it? Yes. Daily 20 minutes of aerobic exercise uh -huh. will increase high-density lipoprotein, the good cholesterol. Okay. That also automatically reduces low density lipoprotein. So you gain a benefit on this direction and a benefit going just down. Just 20 minutes of aerobic that, exercise. You've got just to get the alone. heart pumping. You've got you? it in the key to aerobic. Aerobic means with air. More specifically, with the oxygen going into the lungs and oxygenating the body. But it can't be stopped. In other words, you can't stop and start. It must be non-stop. Walking, climbing steps, skipping ropes, Riding and swimming. 20 minutes straight. 20 minutes. All right, fine. Secondly, vitamin C lowers cholesterol. Garlic lowers cholesterol. Two great factors. <clears throat> Selenium, the mineral, lowers cholesterol. All right, can Easy I, to get into your diet. Can I stop you right here? And sure. we'll pick it up right from this point, all right? Back in a moment with Gary Null and Dr. S. Marcus. <laughs> all 
Well, we're talking with Gary Null and Dr. Martin Feldman about my high cholesterol account, and so far I've learned I should take, what, 10 grams of vitamin C a day? Yes. The average person should take anywhere from 1,000 to 10,000 milligrams of vitamin C a day, or up to what we call bowel tolerance. That's the amount of vitamin C that would start give you a little indigestion, or a little gas, or maybe a little diarrhea. Then you back it down. Okay. And with each person, it's different. But as long as you're not getting that, it means the body's absorbing it. Right. Give an example. If I'm not running marathons, which I frequently do, I'll take anywhere between five, 10,000 milligrams a day. The moment I'm training for a marathon, I can take 20,000, and my body absorbs it because there's greater stress. Mm -hmm. If a person has cancer, that person could take 50 to 100,000 milligrams a day, AIDS victims, I know, are being given 200,000 milligrams a day and still not getting diarrhea. Mononucleosis, which is rampant in America today, and Epstein-Barr virus, which is rampant, those people can take tens of thousands And vitamin C is good for all of these things you just Yes, mentioned. it is. All right, fine. Then the, the garlic, of course, and the aerobic exercise. Quickly, anything else I should be doing? Calcium and magnesium is good, and in the diet, fiber especially oat fiber. Oat bran, oat bran is the best bran because it contain, it's able to hold more water and you create a good movement. The average American gets no more than about three grams of fiber a day mm -hmm. to lower cholesterol, to keep regular and healthy, have about 25 to 30 grams of fiber a day. Well, okay, so how long would it take me, doctor, then to stabilize this condition? Hopefully, if you listen, uh, perhaps uh, four to six weeks. <laughs> listen, that's the key, isn't it? I listen, and if I do, what he's telling me to and do. And this is a lifetime maintenance, isn't it? The minute it is. he stops, I think, it's yeah, going to go no, up again. I think there's an internal tendency for your body to be a little off balance where your liver makes a little too much cholesterol. We've got to kind of straighten it out. Well, listen, Gary will send you a, a free newsletter if you'll send him a self-addressed stamp envelope. We mm. have a slide here with the address. This is uh, information on how to take vitamins. Natural Living Newsletter, Post Office Box 849, Madison Square Station, New York, 10059. Post Office Box 849, 10059. Well, all right, look, let's meet again somewhere thank along you. the line right. and uh, review this, and I thank you very much for your advice. Thank you, thank you Doctor. Thank you.